Fruit Ninja. First of all, there are two frames. The first frame simply has a button which takes you to the second frame. And on the second frame, that's the one that repeats and repeats and repeats and all the action happens. So, here we go. Frame 1. Frame 1 really just has the one thing. It has a tap event function. So when there is a tap event, a touch event, when that touch happens, this function executes. Green button tapped. It basically adds stuff. It adds a slicer, an array of quote-unquote stars, and a background. So first of all, the slicer. The slicer variable is of the slicer class. Variables, of course, have a small letter that they begin with. Classes will have a capital letter. So in this case, it's the same word, but the slicer variable is of the slicer class type. So we look over here at the slicer symbol. There it is. That's what we're adding in that first bunch of code. And we're adding it at 100, 100, x and y. If you look here, you can see on the x scale, 100 is about here, and on the y scale is there. So the slicer should appear right about there. We can run that to see, and there it appears. Next, we are going to add each of the stars. And the stars I put in double quotes because remember that what we're adding here, the star symbol, is an animation that actually is an animation of a star, a moon, and an orange, and a watermelon. So, right here is where we loop through all of them. How many are there? There are eight. There's an array of eight that is the array of stars. So each one of them, first of all, has to be added to the stage with add child at. Then it will be put in a random x position and a random y, not a random y position, a random x position and a y position of 800. The random x position is somewhere between 0 and 475. If math.random returns its lowest possible value of 0, then its x position will be 0 times 475, which is 0. If the maximum possible random number that it is possible return here, 1 is returned, then that's 1 times 475. So the x is between 0 and 475. Between 0 and 475. So somewhere randomly along that axis, and then we already saw that the y is always at 800. So all these eight quote-unquote stars will be attached down below, right about here, randomly between x of 0 and 475. And they're also given three other attributes one which we ended up not using that just got hit, but is moving in speed, we will be using. And these are just attributes that we define any way we want. We're giving is moving a Boolean variable of false and speed of 20. So, in turn, each one of these eight star instances will be given all those values. And then, finally, we want them to randomly be either the star, or the moon, or the orange, or the watermelon, which begin at frames 1, 20, 45, and 50. As we can see here, frame 1, 20 is the moon, 45, and 50. So that code here down to here for each one of them a random number another random number is going to be generated and that random number is going to be between 0 and 1 if it happens to be below 0 0.25 then it'll be a star if it's between 
0 0.25 and 0.5, it'll be what we get when we go to 20, which is the moon. So 25% chance of star, 25% chance of moon, 25% and 20% of orange and water melon. And finally, then we've got the sky background being added. And we go to and play frame two. On to frame two. Frame two is the one where we just stay here and we repeat again and again and again and again and again. And these four things are the four things which repeat again and again and again and again and again. Because these four methods are called within an enter frame method. This method occurs every time this particular event is sent in. And the particular event which is sent in here is an enter frame event. So every time we enter a frame, we call this method and we do these four things. So one last time, these four methods occur every 24th of a second. Let's take them with, well, initiate star movement, the first one. First of all, this is going to keep track of the frames gone by. Frames gone by, we initially initialize at zero, and every frame that we get in, that value is going to go up by one. So by the end of the first second, it'll be 24. By the end of the second second, it'll be 48, and so on. So it's keeping track of the frames gone by. And if the frames gone by, remainder division by 33 equals zero, we're going to start the stars moving. This modulus operator returns the remainder of integer division. So for example, if we're up to frame 33, at frame 33, 33, integer division 33 does result in a remainder of zero. So we'll get in at frame 34, that's 34, integer division to get the remainder by 33 gives a remainder of 1, which does not equal 1. So it's only every 33rd frame, or a little over every second, that we're going to add uh, or have a new star start its movement. And the movement is started by changing that to be true. And there's one last thing that I didn't go over in class, I'll go over quickly now that in terms of which of the quote-unquote stars that we start moving, the zero through the first, the second, or third, or fourth, fifth, or sixth, or seventh, we just do them in turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And once we get to seven, or actually eight, if the counter gets to eight, then the counter goes back to zero. So we just recycle the stars again, and we start them coming up again. Um, again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again and again and again. So this will, every 33 frames, initialize movement in the next quote-unquote star waiting to be uh, thrown up. Move stars. So if they're moving, for the ones that are moving, And we're going to look at each one of them, each frame. If there is moving is true, then this is the one that makes them go up quickly and then they slow down and come to a stop. And then they come down slowly, going faster and faster and faster, just like Flappy Bird. And the way that is accomplished is with only two lines of code. First of all, the y value of that particular star that is moving. The y value will get or not necessarily less and less and less, but it will be minus equaled according to the speed. So if it was starting to move at, let's see what the initial movement speed was, 20. If its original speed was 20, in the very first frame it's going to go negative by 20, remembering that negative here is going up. So if that's the star, it's going to go up by 20, that very first frame. But the cool thing is that the speed itself gets reduced each frame. 
So, for example, after 10 frames, it'll be a full 3 less than 20, so only 17. So after a while, it's going to be 17, right? The next 10 frames, 17, and the next 10 frames, it'll go 14, and it'll slow down. It starts going a lot of frames per second, and then the less and less and less till it stops. And then it actually goes the other way. It goes the other way eventually because the speed, which gets less and less and less, will eventually get down to zero. But minus 0.3 will still be subtracted to the y value. So we have a, a negative negative, which is actually an addition of a y value, which starts off small. After it stops, the first y positive will be 0.3, but then it'll be 0.6 and 0.9 and so on. And so from that point on, the star will go in a positive direction, which in this case is down, more and more and more and more and more speeding up. So nice, gentle rise, slowing down to a stop, and then coming down slowly and faster until it goes below the bottom of the screen. Let's move stars. Check collisions is where we're moving the knife around to hit the different things and slice them. So we need to loop through all of the quote-unquote stars. And any time there's a hit between any one of them and the slicer, that particular one, that same one, so for example, we loop through this, and if it's the third the array of stars 1, 3, which has hit the slicer. Then it's the array of stars 1, 3, for which we go to and stop that same one at the current frame, plus 1. So to see what that does, we take a look at the star symbol. So we go to that current frame, plus 1. So instead of being, for example, for the moon at 20, where there is a stop, we go to 21, which is the current frame plus 1, where there's not a stop. And it continues to play. So the animation goes on until we reach another stop, like right there. So the idea is that the moon goes up. It does move, but when it's hit, we go to the next frame and we have the animation. That's basically it. Each frame we're checking for collisions, and if there is a collision with a particular star, then we go one more frame to start the animation. Finally, resetting the stars at the bottom. If the stars don't get hit, they go up and then they come down, and if they go below the bottom of the screen, of the screen, if they go here, don't get hit, and they come back down. We don't want them to keep on going forever. We want them to reset where they began at the very beginning and get ready to be used again. So basically, we will be taking the code that we had on frame one, all this, and pasting it here. And that's what has been done. And that is pretty well all of the code that would have been used to create something like this, other than keeping track of high scores and scores and so on, but the, the real important stuff is all right there. The end.